Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 11. The Perfect Society for Social Classes, text number 6 and 7. So 6, there's no purport, so I think 7th is on the board, huh? Yo vaitir yatmano sena Dakshayayan to Dharmata Lokanan Svasta Yedyakste Tapo Badekir Asrame Nor Narayan, along with his partial expansion Nara, appeared in this world through the daughter of Daksha Maharaj, known as Murti. He was begotten by Dharma, Raj, Dharma Maharaj for the benefit of all living entities. Even now, he is still engaged in executing great austerities in the place known as Badrik Ashram. Mm -hmm. So Nara and Narayan, they're staying there in Badrik Ashram, performing penance and austerities for the benefit of all living entities. Mm -hmm. And this place is known as Badrik Ashram. It's like nowadays, if you go on the Prikama Marg, you'll see all the ladies sitting with little baskets of little yellow oblong fruits. Uh, in Hindi we call bear, but in Sanskrit that's called badri. Hmm? That fruit is called badri, so those trees are called badri trees. So what happened was Narayan, he was performing penances there high in the Himalayas, just sitting in the open. So Lakshmiji, feeling sorry for her husband, and wanting to serve him, she appeared as a badri tree. In Hindi we say bear tree, but she appeared as badri tree. Therefore that place is known as badri kashram, where the badri trees are growing. So she was giving him shade and shelter. Uh, so much so, uh, she was serving her husband so nicely, that even he became known by her name. Hmm? Uh, badri Bishal, uh, Badri Narayan. He's known by the name of Lakshmi as Badri. Badri Narayan, Badri Bishal. Hmm. Also there's a Badri Nath here in Braj. Also many Badri, jungly Badri trees are there. Uh, and Narayan also staying there in that Badri Kashram. Because Krishna manifested it so the British Vasis wouldn't have to go outside of Braj to see Badri Kashram. Narayan, is there two people or one person? Two people. Nar is... It's Arjuna and Krishna. Nara is, of course, means human being, and Narayan means the shelter of all human beings. So both of them are staying there in Badrikasha, performing penances and austerities. An interesting story about the Badrikasha in Braj, because there was a hmm, asura named Prabala. Prabala asura. Prabala means very strong. Hmm. And he worshipped the sun god and he got benediction of 1,000 kavachas. <coughs> and those kavachas could only be destroyed, one kavach could be destroyed after 1,000 years of fighting. 
So practically nobody could defeat him. So Prabhalasura began terrorizing the universe. So gradually, so the, everybody went to Lord Narayan on in Badrik Ashram in Braj and explained the situation. So then Narayan, he fought with Prabhala, Rish, Prabhala Sura for 1,000 years and one kavach was broken. Then Narayan went back and he sat down in meditation and Nar, he went and fought with Prabhala Sura for 1,000 years and another kavach was broken. In this way, they took turns every 1,000 years they would switch until only one kavach was left. So I don't know how many millions of years that was. This fight was going on, Nar and Narayan switching turns. Hmm. When finally only one kavach was left, uh, <coughs> then he took shelter of the sun god and he appeared as the uh, uh, son of Kunti known as uh, huh? Karn. Because he was born with one kavach, right? <laughs> so that's how Karn appeared. <laughs> Interesting story they tell in Badrinath of Braj. Okay, we'll go to the next verse. Dharma Mulam I Bhagavan Sarvaveda Mayo Hari Smritam Cha Tadvidam Rajan Yena Chatma Prasidati Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan Sarva Veda Mayohari Smitam Chatad Vidam Rajan Yena Chatma Prasidati Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan Sarva Veda Mayohari Smritam Chatad Vidam Rajan Yena Chatma Prasidati Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan Sarva Veda Mayohari Smritam cha tad vidam rajan Mulam The root of religious principles He indeed Bhagavan The Supreme Personality of Godhead Sarva Veda Maya The essence of all Vedic knowledge Hari The Supreme Being Smritamcha and the scriptures. Tadvinam of those who know the Supreme Lord. Rajan, O King. Yena, by which? Religious principle. Cha, also. Atma, the soul, mind, body, and everything. Proceed at become fully satisfied. Translation, the Supreme Being, the Personality of Godhead, is the essence of all Vedic knowledge, the root of all religious principles, and the memory of great authorities. O King Yudhisthira, this principle of religion is to be understood as evidence. On the basis of this religious principle, Everything is satisfied, including one's mind, soul, and even one's body. Translation, please repeat. The Supreme Being, the, Supreme Being, the, personality, of the personality of Godhead, is the essence of all Vedic knowledge, the, of Vedic knowledge the, root of all the root of all religious principles, and the memory of great authorities. authorities. O King Yudhisthira, this principle of religion is to be understood as evidence. On the basis of this religious principle, 
Everything is satisfied, including one's mind, soul, and even one's body. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. As stated by Yamaraj, Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. Yamaraj, the representative of the Lord, who takes care of the living beings after their death, gives his verdict as to how and when the living entity will change his body. He is the authority, and he says that the religious principles consist of the codes and laws given by God. No one can manufacture religion, and therefore manufactured religious systems are rejected by the followers of Vedic principles. In Bhagavad Gita 1515, it is said, Vedais tisarvairaham eva vedya, Vedic knowledge means to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Therefore, whether one speaks of the Vedas, scriptures, religion, or the principle of everyone's occupational duty, all of them must aim at understanding Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam 126 therefore concludes, Savai punta paro dharmo yato bhaktir hoksaje in other words, religious principles aim at learning how to render transcendental loving service to the Lord. That service must be unmotivated and unchecked by material conditions. Then human society will be happy in all respects. The smriti, the scriptures following the principles of Vedic knowledge, are considered the evidence of Vedic principles. There are 25 different types of scriptures for following religious principles, and among them, the scriptures of Manu and Yagyavelka are considered to be all-pervading authorities. In the Yagyavelka Smriti, it is said, Sruti Smriti Sarachara Svasya Cha Priyam Atmana Samyak Sankalpaja Kamu Dharma Mulam Idam Smritam what should learn human behavior from Sruti, the Vedas, and from Smriti, the scriptures following Vedic principles. Srila Gupta Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu says, <clears throat> Sruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatna Vedim Bina Aikantaki Harer Bhaktir Upatayaiva Kalpate the purpose is that to become a devotee, one must follow the principles laid down in the Sruti and Smriti. One must follow the codes of Puranas and the Pancharatriki Bidhi. One cannot become a pure devotee without following Sruti and Smriti, and the Sruti and Smriti without devotional service cannot lead one to the perfection of life. Therefore, from all the evidence, the conclusion is that without Bhakti, devotional service, there is no question of religious principles. God is a central figure in the performance of religious principles. Almost everything going on in this world is religion, is devoid of any idea of devotional service, and therefore condemned by the verdict of Srimad Bhagavatam. Without devotional service, so-called religious principles are only cheating. Hmm. Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan Sarva Veda Mayohari Sutam Chatad Vidam Rajan Yena Chatma Prasidati. The Supreme Being, the Personality of God, is the essence of all Vedic knowledge, the root of all Vedic principles, and the memory of great authorities. O King Yudhisthira, this principle of religion is to be understood as evidence. On the basis of this religious principle, everything is satisfied including one's mind, soul, and even one's body. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadandiyam Aradana Stranandan Taibridam Yache Puna Puna Sri Madhuru Papadam Bujo Dulisyam Janma Janmani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda 
Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaurabhaktarin. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Pancha Kalpa Trubhyastra Kripa Sindhu Vebhata, Patitanam Bhavani Vyo Vaisnavi Vyo Namo Namah. So here this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam very definitely declares Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan. <clears throat> Mulam we know means root. Just like now, everywhere we go we see the push carts and they have uh, carrots and this white radish we call Muli hmm? because it's a root. So Dharma Hi Dharma Mulam Hi Bhagavan. The root of all religion is Bhagavan. In other words, religion means to understand Bhagavan. Hmm? Therefore, Prabhupada quotes this verse over and over again from Dharmaraj hmm? or Yamaraj, who's in charge of all the living entities after their death. He's one of the twelve Mahajans. He said, Dharmam hi tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. The codes of religion, they're given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. Hmm? In other words, no one can manufacture his religious system. Nowadays, especially in the modern age, it's very fashionable. Everybody creates their own religion. Hmm? Art of this, art of that, so many things they create. Hmm? This is a modern fashion. Just like <coughs> in the end of the, the 1919 and 1920, just like recently in 2008, there was a financial meltdown. Hmm? And everybody became very broke. So there was one fellow He had no money. Somehow his friend fared a little better. He was fairly well off. So he went to his friend, he said, Can you lend me a hundred bucks, I'll pay you back someday. I don't know when. So his friend thought, anyway, he'll never be able to pay it back, but anyway, he's my friend, he's bad situation. So he gave him a hundred bucks. A couple years later, he was walking down the street and he saw that poor friend, now he had a nice silk suit with a diamond tie clip, you know, silk tie, wonderful shoes, you know, uh, very nicely dressed, hair completely manicured. Jai Sisi Gorni Tai Krishna Baldava Sisi Radha Shamsan Ki Jai. So he saw his friend who lent him a hundred bucks. He came up to him, he shook his hand. He said, thank you so much. Here, I'll pay you back with interest. He gave him thousand dollars. He borrowed a hundred, he gave back a thousand. Uh, Ali bhai, what happened to you? He said, oh, I invented my own religion. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the fashion in Kali Yuga to invent our own religion. Hmm? But here, Dharmaraj, who's one of the twelve Mahajans, we have to, Mahajan Ujjena Gata Sapanta. We have to follow, Prabhupada quotes this verse over and over again, we have to follow the authorities. <coughs> so Yamaraj, he's one of the twelve Mahajans, he says the path of religion is chalked out by the Lord. Nobody can invent a religion. Hmm? And then Prabhupada quotes this verse just like here it says, Sarva Veda Mayo Hari. Huh? Sarva Veda Mayo. The Lord is the essence, Hari. He's the essence of all religious principles. Here, so your Prabhupada quotes this, one of our favorite verses, easy to remember. Chapter 15, verse 15. Vairais chahameva vedya. That by all the Vedas, I am what is to be known. Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita. Uh, very easy to understand. Somehow, the impersonalists, they cannot understand the simple thing. Krishna is speaking, he says, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. Hmm? And say, it's not Krishna that we have to know, it is the unborn, eternal within Krishna. And Krishna is standing there, he's talking to Arjuna, 
Uh, we have the whole multimedia pre presentation. Arjuna is sitting there, Krishna is sitting there, everybody can see. He says, I'm the essence of Vedas. So what is the difficulty to understand? Krishna is the Supreme Personality God. That's what we're supposed to understand. Throughout the entire Bhagavad Gita, every chapter ends. Uh, even when he describes the yoga system. At the end he says, Yoginam api sarvesam magatein antaratmana sharavan bhajate jomam sami yukta tamomata that of all yogis, yogi namba pi sarvesam. We know this word sarva means all. Huh? Sarvesam of all the yogis. That one, bhajate, sami yukta mo, uh, yogi namba pi sarvesam, madgate nan, shradavan, bhajate joma. With shraddha, with faith, he's doing my bhajan. Sami yukta tamo. Yoga means to link. Comes from the word yukt. So sami yukta tamo. Yukta tamo, we can understand the most strongest link. Uh, that one who's worshipping Krishna with devotion, uh, he's the best of all yogis. So throughout Bhagavad Gita, uh, end of Bhagavad Gita, same thing, only by, re only by devotional service can, my known, can I be known as I am. Uh, so the Lord is the essence of all Vedas and all religion means to understand Krishna and render service to him. Just like Prabhupada quotes our very favorite, one of our very favorite verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. Savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktir huksaje haitu kiya pratiyata yayatma suprasidati. As soon as we heard this verse this morning, we were immediately reminded of this verse, and here it is in the purport. Because huh? yena chatma prasidati, the same thing, suprasidati. Hmm? So he says, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo, the supreme religion. He doesn't say Christian religion, Hindu religion, Muslim religion, Buddhist religion. He says, Sarva, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo, Yato Bhakti or Hokshaje, by which loving service to the personality of Godhead, who's beyond, Adhokshaja, he's beyond this material existence. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a supreme religion to re love God, uh, to render service to Him. Uh, and ahaituki, it should be without motivation. Generally, uh, people, they, go to, they perform religious principles with some motivation. Hmm? Uh, they come to the church uh, in their nice big Lincoln Cadillac uh, or their Mercedes Benz. Uh, they have their nice shirt. They want to show off, yes, I've got God blessings. Just see, I have a nice house. I have a nice suit. I have a nice car. Uh, they're performing religious principles in order to get some material benefit. This is the general tendency of human society. Hmm? But this is not the real benefit. Uh, you will not be able to take that house, car, and, and bank balance with you. Hmm? When you leave this world, everything stays here. Huh? Nothing goes with you. Just like they say, uh, uh, the scriptures tell us uh, that when you die, uh, everything stays here. Huh? Did you say, Huh? But what about my house? Well, your house will stay where it is. It's not going with you. It will stay there. Huh? But I've got my big bank, big bank balance. That will remain in the bank. It's not going with you. Hmm? But I've got my faithful wife. She will follow you up to the door. Hmm? And generally, the ladies don't go to the burning guy. Hmm? So they follow the husband up to the door. She will only follow you up to the door. But I've got so many friends. They will follow you up to the burning ghat. Huh? Huh? But I've got this body. That body will uh, lay there on the pyre. He's not going anywhere. He will go with you up to the pyre. Huh? You will go on alone. Hmm? So these are not the real benefit. Material benefit may be there, but that's not the real benefit. These things will simply bind us. We become attached to all these things. In the time of death, then we're remembering all these things. Hmm? Uh, oh, my house, my wife, my children, my this, my that. Uh, then you'll have to come back and take another birth. Hmm? And we couldn't understand the import of that when we were young, because we were thinking life will go on like this forever. <laughs> But now that we're going old, we find it's no fun to be in this body. <laughs> it's breaking down in every way. 
Uh, and we see every day we're reading on Facebook, another God brother, God sister has left. Hmm? Or about to leave. Uh, <coughs> so material benefit is not what we're looking for with religion. It is ahituki, without any motive. Only motive is to uh, serve Krishna, to please Krishna. Hmm? We want to please Krishna is known as Govinda who gives pleasure to the senses, but the trick is you have to please Krishna's senses and automatically you become satisfied. Hmm? Apratiyata and it must be continuous. It's like Rupa Goswami, he uses the word anushilanam. Hmm? Anushilanam means continuous. Generally people, uh, they go to the temple in the morning, they pray to the God and then they forget him for the rest of the day. Hmm? Or in Western country, they go to church on Sunday and they forget God for the rest of the week. Hmm? Yeah. Just like this lady who's got this famous uh, show on TV, opera. She came here to India and said, people here, they live their religion. She was astonished when she saw India. People here, they just don't have a religion, they live their religion. Hmm? And especially this process of devotional service, everything is completely dedicated to uh, serving Krishna. We're talking about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, singing about Krishna, dancing for Krishna, uh, eating Krishna prasadam. Whole life is completely dedicated to serving Krishna. Uh, continuously. Not that just for one minute in the morning we bow our, bow our head like that. This is a so-called dandavat. <laughs> Too crowded to get down. <laughs> huh? But continuously, apratiyata, without break. Huh? Then what happens? Yayatma suprasiddhati. Suprasiddhati, one becomes fully satisfied. Hmm? So this is a supreme religion to satisfy Krishna. Then automatically, here it is saying, not even, here's the same thing, yayatma. And Prabhupada translates atma being body, mind, and even uh, mind, soul, and even body. Hmm? And we see by following the regulations of the scriptures, even our body becomes satisfied. Hmm? Because generally people are performing so many sinful activities, and therefore they suffer so many diseases and so many, their bodies break down very quickly. Hmm? Huh? But even if, if one performs devotional service, he becomes peaceful. We see the people of the world, they're becoming feverish. Huh? Everything is enjoy this, enjoy now, be the first on your block. Everybody's feverish for material enjoyment. Huh? And fever means disease. Huh? Fever is not a happy situation. Everybody's feverish. But we see the devotees, especially now we're getting older and the desire is still there. They never go away, but somehow becoming a little less. Huh? We're becoming a little more relaxed, not so feverish. Huh? Huh? So one becomes, even the body becomes satisfied. Mind becomes satisfied, soul becomes satisfied, everything. Uh, so this is a supreme religion. Uh, performing devotional service to the Lord. Hmm? And therefore here it says, Smritam. Huh? Prabhupada translates very interesting. The memories of the great authorities. Because huh? Smriti generally refers to the Puranas. Sruti refers to the Upanishads and Vedas. And Smriti means uh, after meditating on the Srutis, the great sages have compiled so many histories to uh, give practical example of all of these different religious principles. Hmm? So, Prabhupada, so here it said, this is our evidence, this is our praman. We want to know something beyond our senses. There's no other evidence other than scripture. Hmm? People don't like to hear this. They like to make up their own, uh, follow their own path, follow their own mind. Uh -huh. But actually, just like Prabhupada gives the example, the only way we can know our father uh, is from our mother. Hmm? Uh -huh. She will say, this is your father. She's the one who knows. Uh, so Veda is like our mother. Uh, they will give us evidence about our father, our spiritual father. Mm -hmm. So we have to follow these codes. 
Therefore, Prabhupada quotes this famous verse of Srila Rupa Goswami. Shruti smiti pranadi pancharata vidim bina. Bina means without. That if you don't follow the principles of Shruti and Smriti and Puranas and Panchatriki Vidi, Bina, then it's just a disturbance. Akaintaki. Aikantaki. It is just a disturbance. It's like we see so many funny things going on in Vrindavan in the name of religion. Somebody dressing up like Gopi and uh, so many things. Uh, this is just a disturbance to human society. Mm -hmm. If we want to perform real devotional service, then we have to follow the uh, Sruti and Smriti. We have to follow the directions of scripture. Without following then, it just becomes a disturbance to society, Rupa Goswami says. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot imagine our own uh, devotional service. Mm -hmm. And here Prabhupada makes the point that if we just follow rules and regulations, without coming to the point of trying to please Krishna, then it's also useless. The whole purpose of following all the rules and regulations is to come to the point of serving Krishna with love. Hmm? So, the following the rules and regulations without understanding the principle behind them, that is also useless. And ignoring all the rules and regulations, that is also useless. We have to do both. Hmm? Therefore, this devotional service uh, is perfect. We are studying Srimad Bhagavatam here. Uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj, after hearing about the glories of Prahlad Maharaj, he wants, he's inquiring for Nard Muni and more about the uh, perfect religious system. Here it is said, the perfect society for social classes. <coughs> this is Vanasram Dharma. People generally called Hindu, but the word Hindu is never found anywhere in our scripture. Banasram Dharm, uh, Sanatan Dharm, that is the word found in our scriptures. Hmm? And this is a scientific way of organizing the society. Somehow the society has to run on. We see now the society is completely upside down. Hmm? Therefore, the, without a peaceful society, no one can actually execute religious principles very easily. Hmm? Uh, now people, uh, in the old days we had one father and one mother, now everybody has two, at least two fathers or two, two mothers. Uh, half the year he spends with father, half the year he spends with his mother, his mother's living with another man, his father's living with another woman. Completely crazy society. Hmm? How people can be peaceful. Hmm? So society has to be organized. Uh -huh. So this Vanashram Dharm, four orders of social classes and four orders of life, has been to scientifically make a peaceful society so we can execute devotional service to the Lord. Because mm -hmm. simply following the principles without coming to the point, that is also useless. Srimad Bhagavatam very clearly, another favorite verse, uh, what is that? Dharma svanustita punsa visvaksena katasya notpariye kataruchi asrama evahi kevalam. Sram means to work very hard. Hmm? Like first we do sram, then we do visram. Just like in Mathura, there's one very famous place, visram ghat. Hmm? Krishna and Balaram, they did some heavy work. They had to uh, get rid of Chanura, Mustika and Kants and so many other wrestlers. And this Kuvali Yapida and so many things. So then after they took bath in Jamuna and they did Bisram at Bisramga. Not only 5,000 years ago, from Adi Varaha Purana, we understand that Lord Braha, he also did a lot of Sram. He had to lift the whole Bhu Mandala from the bottom of the Garbodak Ocean. Then he went to Mathura, he took bath in Jamuna and did Bisram, he took rest. Hmm? So Sram means to work very hard. So Srama Eva. Now this word Eva is a very small word in Sanskrit, two syllables, Eva. But it is not used casually. As soon as you put that word, it means the word before it has become more heavy. Srama Eva. Certainly it is just work. 
Uh, then he, just like here we have, uh, what is that? Uh, Dharma mulam he Bhagawan. It's just one little syllable, but it also, it makes the previous word even more heavy. Hmm? Shrama eva he kevalam. Kevalam means only. Hmm? So what is the Bhagavatam saying? That even if you follow Dharma Svanustita Pumsa, you follow your Dharma very nicely. Huh? But you don't develop any kataruchi, notpare, not utpad. Utpad means to develop. I mean products. Hmm? Uh, we go to the produce market, utpad. Huh? Note, but no party, it's not developed. What? Kata ruchi, you don't develop any attraction for hearing about Krishna, then srama eva hi kevala. Then all your following of religious principles is useless, juiceless labor and nothing else. Very heavy words in Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? So the whole purpose, not just to follow the codes, we have to follow the codes, but we should understand the purpose. Hmm? And that Krishna is very nicely told, the whole purpose of the Vedas is to understand me. Hmm? Therefore Prabhupada has engaged us in this wonderful process of devotional service, uh, hearing and chanting about Krishna, dancing for Krishna, raising children for Krishna, cooking for Krishna, everything we, we're doing, so many activities, all connected with Krishna. Hmm? And gradually we're becoming attracted to hear about Krishna. I can remember, uh, from the very beginning, I became very attracted to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And then we first became devotee. We very, uh, hmm? In fact, I joined in a place called Boulder, Colorado, which is at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. So I joined right at, on Jamastami Day, which was that year was September 2nd. So there it becomes very cold and it started snowing and everything. And the devotees had no money, so they couldn't buy any warm clothes. We couldn't do Harinam. Because that was the only thing we did in the old days. We just went on hours and hours on the street chanting and chanting. Hmm? So I was just sitting and reading. We had these old red Bhagavatams, uh, uh, completely misspelled and misprinted, and so many typos were there. But it was so attractive. I just loved to sit and read Srimad Bhagavatam. Because hmm? it was too cold, it was snowing outside. Immediately become attracted. Hmm? This is Prabhupada's trick. He attracted us to the scriptures. Hmm? Attracted us to hearing about Krishna. Hmm? And this is the whole purpose of uh, all the rules and regulations of the scriptures. Uh, they can all be boiled down into one. One rule and one regulation. Always remember Krishna and the regulation is don't forget. Uh, well, Prabhupada gave us this nice process of devotional service. Where we can always remember Krishna 24 hours a day. Prabhupada said, this is practical samadhi. Hmm? Prabhupada told so many times, I've seen so many yogis. Uh, because actually the yoga system, you keep eye half open and half closed. Uh, half closed because otherwise you'll be distracted by so many things. And if you close completely, <laughs> Prabhupada said, I saw so many yogis, he's not in samadhi, he's sleeping. Hmm? Uh, uh. So this samadhi is very difficult. But this always engaged in Krishna's devotional service, uh, this is practical samadhi. Hmm? In the morning we... Uh, who, who else gets up at 4.30 in the morning and dances and things, has a party? Huh? <laughs> yeah, everyone's party is usually ending at 4.30. We're a party is starting at 4.30. Huh? Dancing and singing for Krishna, then chanting Krishna's name, then hearing this nice philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Huh? This is real pleasure. As I remember I was in LA one time. <coughs> And there was one boy, he was from some place where there was no temple in New Mexico or some place. But he got a book in an airport and then he wrote, it said you can write to LA. So he wrote to somebody there and they sent him more books and they sent him chanting bees and they taught him how to offer his food. And without even coming in contact with the temple, he learned how to become a devotee. So then they wrote, Prabhupada's coming to LA, you should come. So he came to LA and so immediately the temple authorities invited him to come on the walk with Prabhupada and I was there on that walk that day. So Prabhupada was walking on Venice Beach. It used to be so nice. Uh, Prabhupada would be wearing bright saffron and the sun would be coming up over the land because we're on the west coast so it comes up over the land 
and you saw Prabhupada, the big orange sun and big orange Prabhupada, like both of them have made a pact. They made a treaty to bring light into the world. Hmm? They'll probably be walking. So this boy said, See the Prabhupada, I'll suddenly blurt out, I read in your books that wherever a pure devotee stays, then all material enjoyment goes away. And Prabhupada stopped and he dug his cane into the sand. So many times when Prabhupada went to make a point, he put his cane in the sand. And he turned around to see who spoke. He said, we do not say do not enjoy. That is not our process. Hmm? You were not in the kirtan this morning? Oh yes, Prabhupada. That was not enjoyable? Oh yes, Prabhupada. That was very enjoyable. You were not in the class hearing stream at Bhagavatam? Yes, Prabhupada. That was not enjoyable? Oh yes, Prabhupada. That was very enjoyable. Yes. This is enjoyment like a human being. Hmm? We do not say, en do not enjoy. We say, you enjoy like a human being. And this drink all night in disco club, this is enjoyment. Oh no, Prabhupada, that's not enjoyment. No, this is enjoyment like cat and dog. Huh? So we don't say don't enjoy. Hmm? We say you enjoy like a human being. Huh? Hearing the Krishna kata, chanting the Krishna's name, doing some service for Krishna. Huh? This is Krishna consciousness. Enjoyment like a human being, supreme enjoyment, supersedity. One becomes fully satisfied. Huh? Therefore, Prabhupada has given us this perfect process of devotional service with the essence of all the Vedas. Dharma mulam hi Bhagavan. Uh, the essence of all religion is Bhagavan. To serve him and love him. Hmm? And spritim cha. All the scriptures are meant to help us to come to that point. Therefore, we have to come to that point. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's appeared in this dark age of Kali. Just... Uh, Several more days and we'll celebrate that wonderful appearance of Sriman Mahaprabhu. He's appeared in this dark Kali Yuga. Uh, this Kali Yuga is very horrible, but one good thing. Uh, 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 what is that? Hmm. Ah, Kalar Doshini De Rajan. Oh, king. Again, Rajan. Uh, Oh, King, this Kali is an ocean of falls. But there's one great quality in this Kali Yuga. Hmm? Mahaprabhu has brought this chanting of the Holy Name. Ekho Mahaguna. Kirtana Deva Krishnasya. He doesn't say Kali Kirtan, Durga Kirtan, Shiva Kirtan. He says Krishnasya, Krishna Kirtan. Mukta Sangha Param Brajet. Not only you get Mukti, you will go to the Param Braj. Param Brajet. Hmm? So Mahaprabhu has descended in this dark Kali Yuga with this wonderful process, simple process of devotional service. Hmm? Prabhupada says it begins with the tongue. By the tongue we uh, speak and by the tongue we uh, taste. So if you speak, you sing the name of the Lord and you taste Krishna Mishan. These two simple devotional service. Huh? And Krishna will be revealed to you. Taksi Krishna Naba, Dinaba Vedgraya Mindri. Seva Mukhi Jiva though. Service Seva begins Jiva, this tongue. You begin this simple service. Huh? Huh? Then Krishna will reveal himself. Because huh? it's very difficult for us to understand Krishna. We are very tiny. But because Krishna is unlimited, he can do the impossible. So he reveals himself. But we have to engage in his service. And Mahaprabhu has descended in this dark age of Kali. Give this simple process, chanting the holy name with great love and affection. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. You just go on in this way and you will understand Krishna one day and render pure devotional service to him. Hmm? So today is also the uh, disappearance day of Purushottam Thakur. I don't know much about him, just I know he was one of the twelve Gopals known as Daman. There's many uh, Gopals who were special associates of Krishna. And his name was Daman, just like we know Sri Daman. This was Daman. And he was considered one of the great devotees of Lord Nityananda. Uh, he was very dear. He, his whole family, <coughs> father and sons were all great devotees and great devotees of Lord Nityananda. And one time he was dancing in Braj and his ankle bell broke and disappeared. 
He said, wherever it is found, that place I will establish my Sripat, my place of bhajan. So somewhere near Jasor, I can't remember the exact name of the village, uh, they found his ankle bell, although he lost it in Braj, it was peered there. So in that place he made his Sripat. Although Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says later the, that temple was swallowed by the uh, river, so then it was established in another place. Hmm? So today is that Purushottam Thakur, one of the twelve Gopals, so close associated with Krishna, it's his disappearance day. So does anybody has any questions or comments? Yes. Where's our Bhakta mic? Oh, hiding. Attachment to devotional service, that is the whole point. If we're attached to coming to the programs, or coming to the RT, coming to the darshan RT, coming to the class, that's great attachment. That attachment will help us. Hmm? Rupa Goswami clearly says that uh, that which develops our love of God, that we need to be attached to. Hmm? And if we make our family devotees, then it's all right for us to be attached to our family. They're also devotees. who we'll also remember. Huh? Just like our Ajamil, somehow or other he named his son Narayan. So at the time of death he was calling out, he was calling out the name of his son, but it was still his name was Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. Then he re actually remembered, it's described, our acharyas have described, he actually remembered the real Narayan. The Yamaduta is always very simple. They couldn't take him. Yamaraj said, no, he's coming with me. <laughs> the Vishnu Dutas came and said, no, no, he's going with, he's going with us. So if we make our family Krishna conscious, then there's no difficulty. So if there's no other questions or comments, then we can all fall down at the very soft and wonderful lotus feet of the great personality who's engaged us in the essence, dharma hi mulam hi bhagavan, essence of all scriptures to serve the Lord with love and affection. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah.